Hey everybody, how are you going today? This is a very quick news flash, but I think it's a super important news flash for Nikon. Today, right now, this is a tipping point for where Nikon fit in the filmmaking world. Now in a video you can watch just up here, I talked about the Noct and how the Noct looked like Nikon was going to move into the cine market as they'd created a lens that not only was optically outstanding, but it also looked like, it actually physically looked like uh, one of their potential future, future competitors, which is Cook, looks like a Cook lens. So this is the next big step. Now I suppose uh, as much as Nikon's talked about this for almost a year, most of us I suppose don't really think it's true until it happens. Well. It's happened, and it's happened today. And these are two massive things that are going to impact Nikon's ability to be in the filmmaking space. And those two things are, one, CF Express. Now, you might say, CF Express, what's that got to do with filmmaking? Well, it may not have anything much to do with filmmaking more than we have so far on the Z6 and Z7, but, with the upcoming D6, which is announced, and obviously we will see a Z8 or 9, I believe the CF Express will allow for internal raw recording, especially on a camera like the D6, which is absolutely massive. So today we have CF Express. Now this is a format that I made a film about here, which you can jump and have a look at in more detail. But these cards, even so they're exactly the same as an XQD to look at, even so CF Express is exactly the same form factor as this little guy I have here in my hand, it is a completely different technology. It is the next iteration. Right now, these things are reading and writing at something like 1,400 megabytes per second. That's crazy and they can store up to one terabyte right now. And this is where we're starting. Of course, we can get smaller cards. For 199 US dollars, you can get a 128 megabyte card from SanDisk. For a little bit more, you can get the Sony one. Now, I segue to Sony because the Sony one is required for the current update. Now, Nikon has said other cards will work in the future, but it's something to do with the format and how it's all done and so on and so forth. For $229, you can have a 128 gigabyte CF Express card that runs super fast and it does all the things that CF Express does. And of course, this allows for the filmmaking. So that's the CF Express part of this newsflash. The next other exciting part of this newsflash is raw recording. Now, raw recording means we get the data off the sensor, unadulterated, recorded. Now, this takes up tons and tons of space because it's 12-bit raw 4K. But if you want to do some serious stuff, you can get a camera like a Z6, which now is, in this, is on sale in this country for $2,300. I'm actually going to go and get one. Based on everything that's happening right now, I own a Z7, I'm going to go get a Z6 as a dedicated video camera. That is how excited I am about it. The glass is outstanding, and this shows us that Nikon are very serious about moving into this space. So, raw recording onto an Atomos Ninja 5. That's how you do it. It's external right now. Like I said just before, we might see it internally in the next cameras and in a camera like the D6, because heat is probably the biggest issue with these things and these small cameras. They, shouldn't, they just simply shouldn't be expected to be able to do raw in such a tiny package, I don't think. Anyway, without having internal fans, which these do not and having weather sealing, which they do. There are other cameras that have this sort of capability, but they're not weather sealed and they have fans in them and their battery lives are diminished and so on and so forth. So what does RAW mean? Well, firstly, uh, it's a $199. So that is very inexpensive for what, so if I hear anyone complaining about that, uh, I'm not even gonna respond. 
it's just it's laughable. $199 is nothing to have this capacity. It is absolutely nothing. So that's the cost, US dollars. I suppose in Australia it'll be $299. It's usually about 50% more. And what does it do? Well, it's slightly different what it does on the Z6 and Z7. Because the sensor sizes are different, when the Z6 is doing 4K RAW, it's the it's, it has the capability to do full frame. And when the Z7 is doing 4K RAW, it gets cropped to DX. And that's obviously because it is reading the pixels directly, is my guess. That's what's happening there. It just simply cannot pull all that sensor down sample it and then send it off to the Atomos. Can't do it. So there's that slight difference. Obviously the Z6 has always been aimed at the filmmaker. The Z6 has the slightly better focus, it has the slightly better high ISO, and it has the slightly crisper video. That's what everybody says. Not to say the Z7's a slouch, it's not. It looks amazing, as we can see right here, right now, because that's what we're shooting on, the Z7 with the 50mm, but the Z6 is touted as the video machine. So, if you want full frame, 35mm, 4K, 12-bit, raw video, you can get it in the US, sub $2,000, in Australia right now on sale for $2,300. This allows you to do it. This is astonishing. This is a game changer. And we should all be very excited about it. So that's the news flash. You, I'm, going to, I'm also going to jump on B&H and order one of the Sony CF Express cards because I think there's suddenly going to be a rush on those around the world. And just as a point, people have been talking about and worrying about this update for a while. My thoughts actually are that this update has been waiting on the cards to arrive. And the cards have only just started arriving. I've just read on, read on B&H that the cards have only just started arriving. So it may well be that Nikon was waiting for the media to arrive for, C, for the CFX Express update because there was kind of no point having it, this update, if you couldn't buy a card for it. Anyway, that's my little theory. So based on my previous video, which you can see just up here, which was, are you buying a Z6 or a Z7? Now, after this news, I, I know some of the people in my comments were waiting to see if this happened. Well, it's happened. So are you? Are you gonna buy a Z6 or a Z7? Uh, for those of us who already own them, I'm also very interested in, in, in from you whether you would be buying the uh, RAW update. Now, I can imagine that probably 95% of people won't be buying the RAW update. And that's perfectly fine, it makes perfectly sense because most people don't need it. But I'd also love to hear from the people that are excited about it, that will upgrade. It's a very, very small cost. And then what will you be shooting with it? You know, I've always wanted to make a TV show and a film. Maybe this is the, finally the opportunity to go ahead and do this sort of stuff. So anyway, I'd love to hear from you. What do you think of CF Express? What do you think of the RAW update? And what are you going to do? Are you going to get a Z6 or a Z7 if you don't have one? If you want to do video, the Z6 absolutely now looks like a complete and utter cracker. And if you want to have an amazing video machine that still does raw video, it's just cropped a little, it's just on full frame. And you want to take the best, some of the best stills, some of the highest res best stills you can take on the market. The only competitor I can see in this space is the Sony, above this is the Sony a7R 4 which obviously has its pros and cons. The Z7 is an amazing camera. You can't go wrong. Let me know, please. I'd love to hear you. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. Please share. Please like. Please comment. And if you'd like to see more of my films, just click on the, uh, the, the, the Mado one. Sorry. Uh, yeah, the Mado one down here. Click on that Mado one down there. And you can see over 150 of my films right now. I'd love to see more of you. All right. All right. See you soon. This is just a quick news flash. I've got another video coming in another day or two. It's finished. Bye.